Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're broadcasting from the COP22, the UN Climate Summit here in Marrakesh, Morocco. I'm Amy Goodman. In what's seen by some as a direct response to the election of Donald Trump and his rejection of climate science, nearly 200 nations have agreed on a proclamation here in Marrakesh declaring implementation of the Paris Climate Accord to be a, quote, urgent duty. This comes just over a week after Donald Trump was elected president. He's vowed to pull the United States out of the Paris Agreement and has called climate change a Chinese hoax. Trump will soon become the only world leader who doesn't believe in climate change. Meanwhile, a headline in The Washington Post Thursday read, The North Pole is an insane 36 degrees warmer than normal as winter descends. The Washington Post reports this is the second year in a row that temperatures near the North Pole have risen to freakishly warm levels. We're joined now by two guests. Dipte Bhatnagar is the Climate Justice and Energy Coordinator at Friends of the Earth International, based in Mozambique. And Vidya Venkat is the Senior Assistant Editor at The Hindu, based in India. Her most recent piece, Marrakesh Action Proclamation, sends out strong signal on climate. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Um, Dipte, let's begin with you. As, we, as the summit wraps up, what has been accomplished here? So I think the, there's been a shadow cast over this entire two weeks of COP22 here in Marrakesh with the president, uh, president-elect Trump being elected in the U.S. And I think that the global community here has really come together to give a strong response to that. We've seen the countries step up and say that they will, they, they're still in, they, they will move forward. But what we haven't seen here is those words being turned into action. And that has, I think, been... Uh, the unfortunate bit here at COP22, because what we really needed to see here was a ramping up of ambition, a ramping up of the targets that the developed countries especially put on the table in Paris last year, because those were absolutely not enough to stay under 1.5 degrees C. The Obama administration's in power for another two months. What do you want to see in this period? I think that um, I think that that John Kerry made a very strong verbal commitment. He was just here when he presented when he spoke at the press conference the other day, really committing that that the U.S. has taken some steps forward and those cannot be reversed. And I think those are really strong words. Now it's time really for the U.S. to turn those into action because the U.S. was one of the developed countries which was not meeting its fair share of targets. It did not pledge enough based on what its fair share historically and currently should be. And I think one of the things that we would like to see from President Obama and from the other developed countries, this isn't only about the U.S., this is about all of the developed countries really needing to step up their emissions reductions targets and finance, because without that, the energy transformation in our countries and the South is going to be very, very difficult. And that's what's needed to stop this climate catastrophe. Lydia Venka, talk about what you're covering here. You're coming from a country. Do you live in New Delhi? No. Talk, I live though, in Chennai. about New Delhi and what's happening, the reports we're getting of the level of air pollution off the charts. Okay. Uh, well, basically, my focus of coverage at COP22 is not just India, but I'm looking at the global uh, reactions coming in. Uh, because in the true spirit of the Paris Agreement, uh, everyone is supposed to get together and act on climate change. So I guess it's a bit unfair if you focus on just one country. And talking about pollution in India, yes, it's a big problem. In fact, uh, Greenpeace just recently came out with a report saying that the number of pollution deaths in India are higher than the number of pollution deaths in China. So that's like one of the things where we beat China. We killed more people uh, from pollution, uh, which is not a good story. But I also think that Delhi being the capital gets a disproportionate amount of attention in the press. Uh, climate change has had a severe impact in India. Uh, the drought for the last two years, consecutive years uh, of poor rainfall, has meant that uh, a huge amount of people have been affected by it, especially farmers. The, in fact, the numbers run into something like 330 million people affected by drought. So that's a much uh, larger number and and I genuinely feel that uh, the issue of agriculture and farmers being affected and, and I'm told that agriculture has been dropped from the Paris uh, you know negotiations here 
uh, at, at Marrakesh. So uh, concerns about agriculture, concerns about adaptation, how, how do countries like ours, which are affected by climate change, adapt to and these? You, they have, have not been addressed. Your response to Donald Trump's election could be the first uh, major world leader to deny climate change. Well, I, I really feel that uh, given all the scientific evidence that exists, if a world leader denies uh, it doesn't exist, then there's something really wrong with him. Because, uh, I mean, as journalists, we have been putting out one story after the other the glacier glaciers retreating for example in india i mean i traveled to gangotri in may which is the source of the ganges river and the glacier has retreated by three kilometers and uh, th that's massive and that's evidence in front of well, you i so. want to thank you both for being with us vijay venkat senior assistant editor at the hindu as well as uh, dipti bhatnagar uh, who is climate justice and energy coordinator at friends of the earth international based in mozambique as we end today